have an application here which shows the processes running on my machine, and it updates every few seconds. Now this is a frequently pulling request, so it would be nice if we make this update request as efficient as possible in our Rails application. Now before I get into optimizing this application, let me briefly walk you through the code so you get a better understanding of how it works. Most of it is inside of this CoffeeScript file here, which pulls for the list of processes. You can see I have this function called update, which basically just fetches the list of processes and then updates a processes tag on the page with that list of processes. And then it does this every three seconds in the application. Now this path right here, the processes slash list, is going to route to the processes controller list action that you see right here. And this is very simple. It just runs this command to fetch the list of processes and then renders that back out as text to the client. Now the issue here is that we're going through the entire rail stack here for this simple list action, which just renders out some text. We don't need the entire rail stack here, so we could shave off a few milliseconds if we bypass it. Now in the past, I've shown how to do this using Rails Metal, which is a way to respond to a request without the entire Rails stack. However, we have a problem, and that is Rails Metal was removed in Rails 3. And rightfully so, because there are a couple of alternatives which work better in Rails 3, as you can see in this commit message. Now there is something called Action Controller Metal, which despite having the same name, isn't quite the same. It's basically just a stripped down Rails controller and it's not going to give us as much performance boost as we're looking for here, so I'm not really going to use Action Controller Metal here. Now the core of the issue is that much of the request processing now happens through Rack Middleware. So what happens is the request comes in, and it goes through all of this middleware here before it hits your Rails application routing at the end here. So you may have a highly efficient streamlined controller that handles it as an endpoint here, but it's still going to go through all of the middleware listed here. So to uh, get by this, you can actually make your own middleware and place it at the top of this list here so that it gets hit first before any of the other processing happens. And that's the solution I'll be going with in this episode. So we need to make a piece of middleware which does the same thing as this controller action here. Now where do you put middleware? We could put it in the lib directory, but in this case I'm going to actually put it under the app. I'm just going to make a new directory here called middleware. Um, that way it'll be auto-loaded. So I'll make a new file here. Let's call it uh, processes uh, list.rb. Now middleware is just a simple class that meets two requirements. One is that it can be initialized with an app passed in, and I'll just store that in an instance variable. The other is that it responds to call just like a rack app does. And in here we can see if the uh, path, which is the environment path info, matches the uh, processes slash list. And if it does, then we want to respond in the same way that that list controller action did, which is 200 OK response and the content type should be uh, text slash plain. And we want the uh, response to actually include a list of the items. And I'll just paste in the uh, same command that we did in the controller like that. So it displays the list. And then otherwise, it's just going to forward this call onto the application that was passed in. And that should be an instance like that. So now this piece of middleware has roughly the same behavior as that controller action, but we still need to add it to our application. And to do that, I can go into the application config file here, and at the bottom I'll just add a call to config.middleware.use, and then you can pass in the class such as processes list. Now this won't quite work because our class hasn't been loaded when this config file is loaded. So we can pass this in as a string, and that will just work in basically loading it later. So now when we run the rake middleware command again, you can see that uh, our processes list middleware is now listed here. However, it's near the end of the stack and we don't want that. We need to move it up the stack. And where you place it in the middleware here is going to depend on what your middleware needs. For example, if you need cookies, you may want to place it after the cookies middleware here and so on. Now I explain all this various middleware in episode 319, so check that out if you want to see what it does. But in this case, our middleware is really simple, so we can move it up to the very top of our middleware stack here. Now to specify where this middleware should be placed, you can replace this use call to either insert before or insert after, and then you need to specify another middleware such as rack lock or whatever you want. Now an alternative is you can specify an index instead of another piece of rack middleware here, such as index zero, and that will end up placing our processes list middleware at the very top. And now when we run the rake middleware command again, you can see processes list is at the very top now. Yay!
And now when we visit the application, it still works, and it's using that middleware for handling the processing of the list so it's not going through the entire Rails stack. So now we could just delete this old list controller action, but let's leave it around because I want to do some performance benchmarking. So I'm going to update the routes here and change this processes list to processes old list that goes to that controller action. So that way we can benchmark each one. Now, whenever you're benchmarking, it's a good idea to start the server in the production environment so that you can get an idea of performance in production. And I'm also going to detach this server too so that it's not in the same process here. Now to do the benchmarking, I'm going to use the AB command and let's trigger uh, 100 requests on the Rails app. So that's localhost port 3000 slash processes slash, uh, let's do our old list first. So let's see how the full Rails stack performed with the traditional controller. And you can see that got about 15 and a half uh, milliseconds, about 64, maybe 65 requests per second with that. And now let's try our new list and that's using our middleware and that got about 13 milliseconds and about 74 requests per second. So not a huge difference here, but we did shave off a couple of milliseconds. And if you're doing a very frequent request, that couple of milliseconds may make a big difference. Well, that's it for this episode on creating a piece of middleware to handle a request without the Rails stack. Now you shouldn't do this everywhere, of course. Uh, there are very few places where a couple of milliseconds saved here and there really matter. But on those cases where it does, especially if you are doing maybe combination with caching, you just need to read a cache value and return it to the client as fast as possible. Uh, this can be a great way to go. Thanks for watching.